We got tanks in the truck, hoses in the truck, product in the truck. It's a little different than what it looked last time. With all this done, that leads one thing, and that means we are doing cleanouts. We don't have just one feature on this project, not two, but we actually have three features on this homeowner's property. Hey everyone, it's Jack with Team Aquascape. We got tanks in the truck, hoses in the truck, product in the truck. I'm gonna take you back a few steps to see how we got to this step and what the game plan is with how we configure our maintenance vehicles for the season. So come on, let's go inside. What's happening? Levi, I don't think we've officially introduced you. No, it's been a, uh, it's been a, it's been a while. It's been a while. Why don't, why don't yep. you re reintroduce yourself? Well, I'm Levi. I uh, am on the maintenance crew mainly, for the maintenance side of things, doing a little fix-its with uh, Josh and all that. So yeah, everything's good. Got new trucks. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So Levi's kind of been deadheading uh, the this project, which is pretty. It's which has been a pretty big project. I mean, you've been doing this for a couple weeks now. Uh, on and off, yeah. Yeah. Hit and miss. Just we're trying. I mean, we're waiting for stuff to come in, and then as soon as it gets sent in, we're starting to uh, put stuff in the trucks. We already did one truck, and that was kind of just to see how everything was staging. One of the things that uh, was a downside for us was the shelves. Um, we just they they ordered the shelves. The trucks came in and realized that the boxes that we have around here, and the majority of the boxes, are too big for to fit on these shelves. And what I mean is that these shelves aren't as deep that we would, as we would like them to have. So we have to pull all the pumps out of the boxes and put them up here, which is not really a huge thing. It's just more of a little bit of an inconvenience because now um, you, everyone has to really pay attention to what pump they're grabbing. Levi did uh, add a two by four up here so you guys can see, and that is just to hang some more stuff. So obviously we have clean out hoses, we have garden hoses, we have power washer nozzles and hoses that we have to hang. Instead of having that all on the floor, we want to get all that stuff up on top and in a home. So we did a great job on kind of mounting the brackets for the two by four up top. Why don't we, uh, let's go around the other side. So before we actually had a shelving unit that sat right here, which unfortunately uh, in some cases kind of prevented us from getting inside the truck from the side of the vehicle. We only had to access it from the back side. This time we decided to push that shelf back behind and then have it where we could go through the um, the side of the truck into the back. The good thing is now we can put all our tanks back here. So we, with our clean out tanks, these trucks are a little bit wider. So it's nice that we can throw all our tanks going this way now and hold a lot more tanks before when we had a bigger job. We had to take this truck that had all the product and the power wash and everything like that, plus another bigger truck like the Isuzu to a job with all the tanks on it because there's jobs that we have to have all 25 tanks that we have in our area. With us having the more room to transit, we can have more tanks, which allows us to only have one truck going to a job. But they're gonna kind of go through, get everything staged in this truck. They have everything laid out off on the floor, kind of have make sure that they have everything, make sure their I's are dotted and their T's are crossed. And then they're gonna start loading this stuff up in the trucks and then get this thing ready to go. So that way we could start in a couple days. I know it's Thursday here and I know Monday we have to get these trucks out on the road and all of us are gonna start doing clean outs. We're finally done with the Pro Masters out here. Let's open this thing up and take a look inside. So you can see it's a little different than what it looked last time. We have all of our tanks and our clean out hoses and our garden hoses all sitting over here. If you want to come into here, right here, Josh actually found online these bucket holders, which I was driving around this truck today and they did not move anywhere. I could hear uh, if anything was moving around and these stayed nice and secure. So really happy to see it. We added these into the truck and stuff. If you come into here, right here we have our fish food um, in these two spots or in these three spots and we actually have a nice little cubby hole. And so I was thinking 
maybe a little snack room area or a little uh, cooler space. Who knows? We, let me know in the comments down below and see what we should uh, keep down in there. As you can tell, we have all of our product back in here. This is all the stuff that we uh, need to have on our trucks to do clean outs and to do maintenance throughout the season. So this side has all my aerators, my pumps, my check valves. Anything, any, any of the bulkier stuff is all on this side of the truck. And then you're to come to this side, it's kind of my smaller stuff. You have all my lights sitting over here, my water treatments down in here. We have all of our extra nets that we have because we do service ponds that have a lot of the older style skimmers in here. So this is what those uh, nets are for. Coming over here, we have all my smaller stuff that was on that uh, transit earlier. It was on one of these big shelving units, but now since we have these smaller shelves, now we can kind of compartmentalize each area. So all up top is my structure pond, my structure bond, my foam, my silicone, all my small stuff that was kind of all over the place and now it has a home for it. So I'm really happy how that turned out. The only thing that's different from this truck to the other truck is my packouts. These packouts are from our construction trailer, but these are the ones that I pulled at every single job that we use and I know where all my tools are at in this and I wanted to bring them on here. I just like being a little bit more prepared, not saying that their trucks are more prepared, but I just felt more comfortable having them on here. But we have all my tools sitting off down in here, have a bunch of stuff, extension cords, jumper cables in case battery dies on the truck and we need to jump it. That's a little rundown on what we got in this truck. Going forward, I think they're gonna suit us a little bit better than how the transits did, uh, setting up wise. So we'll play it by ear and see how it goes through a season. And then who knows, we might change some things out next year. So with all this done, that leads one thing. And that means we are doing clean outs. So we're gonna take this truck and we are gonna go do a clean out. Hey everyone, well, you just saw we got our maintenance vehicles all done. Now we're actually gonna put them to use. So let's go to the backyard and see what we got going on. We got uh, everything set up for our first pond that we got going on here. Right now we're going through, we have a pond drained or it's draining right now. We got one tank filled up. The good thing about this feature is that it's right next to a creek. So we're actually able to discharge a lot of our water off into the creek and then it's super clean water. So we're able to use some of that water to rinse down some of this big organic stuff that's inside the stream. You can see a bunch of this stuff. It's just a bunch of slop that's down on the bottom. So it's nice to kind of use that pressure from the fire hose nozzle off our cleanup pump to push all that sludge out of the way. And then of course we'll, uh, we'll fill it up with nice clean water. Our main focus is to get this drain down all the way, get all the sludge and debris out of this, and then we'll start rinsing down and power washing. We don't have just one feature on this project, not two, but we actually have three features on this homeowner's property. We have two ponds, one uh, to my right, the one that we just went over, and then we also have this bigger one. This one's definitely a little bit longer, has probably a good, I would say 50 foot long stream kind of coming up from the street and the driveway area coming down a set of stairs coming down into a pond and then flowing down into another stream down into his uh, basin area which is over my left shoulder over in this corner so the guys are actually starting to kind of pick up the leaves over here and we can go over there and see what they're doing and you can see Connor and Tyler are uh, going through right now getting everything cleaned up they're actually addressing some of these roots because this big tree right here the roots are going down into that uh, stream and causing issues with damming up water and causing a leak so we want to get minimize that as much as possible and pull those roots out of there so we actually have a new guy connor which is off uh over here want to say hello connor what's up guys i'm connor been here about what like a month month and a half now it's going well great team i feel like we have a good team yeah. Things are going pretty well so far. I just figured I'd uh, introduce, so in case you guys see an unfamiliar face, now you're gonna see a familiar face out on the, on the vlogs and everything like that. This is the second feature that we got going on. Let's go see Levi, and he's up at the small little feature up on the curbside, which this one is a really cool feature. I, I like this one a lot. All right, well, this is our last feature that we got going on. Right now, um, Levi's getting ready. He's getting, uh, he has a power washer all ready to go. He's gonna start power washing all this and uh, get this all freshened up. This feature is a really unique feature because we're kind of in right outside of a downtown area and there is a bunch of dog traffic walking in and out of this area because there's all the homeowners around here have dogs. Our homeowner wanted to have a place for the dogs to kind of drink water so they come out here and the dogs absolutely adore this little feature. Every time that we come here for maintenance, the dogs are always drinking out of this thing. So it's always cool to have a little feature um, kind of for the public and not really for the homeowner itself. That's what we got going on. We got three features. It's definitely a big undertaking. You can see we have six people out on this one house just to kind of get this done in a day. So we'll be out here for the rest of the day and stay tuned to see how it goes. We 
got the pond drainage. We're gonna go through, we're gonna pick all the debris. We're trying to pick as much of the stuff that we can with our hands as possible. Josh right now is up on the top, flushing all that organic debris, all that small, fine debris that we can't really pick with our uh, hands. He's uh, flushing all that stuff down in the clean out hose and dumping it down in the uh, creek. That way we could power wash this and that way when we, when we do the final rinse, it's not uh, it's not gonna take us as long and it's not gonna be as hard. Cause that's the hard thing is that when we're power washing, we don't want stuff flying off, getting on the house, getting on the patio, getting on all the rock and just making a mess. We're trying to make our lives as easy as possible. Right now, it's just pretty much just picking all that debris out of the way, rinsing, doing a pre-rinse, and then the next step would be power washing. One pull that's gonna start. As you saw, Josh was power washing, and as he was power washing, I was coming through, and I started up at the top, and I started uh, rinsing our way down. So I came through, and I hooked up our fire hose nozzle, and I started rinsing all the gravel down and doing a final rinse. So what we're doing is we're trying to get this water nice and clear, and how we do that, we start on the top, get back behind all the different nooks and crannies with the fire hose nozzle and the garden hose combined, go through, try to rinse all that debris and all that organic matter back behind the rocks down, through and end of the bottom, and then that way we can start working our way down to that final uh, layer, uh, which would be down here. So I'm 99% done. I'm just trying to get a little bit of the fine debris out of here. As you can see, I do have a garden hose and a fire hose going at the same time. And the reason for that is I put the garden hose back behind me, so I would have him sitting back over here. And then um, the intent would be to have a current of water going towards the pump. Doesn't have to be a much but then I have the fire hose nozzle in my hand and I'm kind of uh, stirring up the gravel with my hand in conjunction with the fire hose nozzle, moving all that gravel around, picking all that debris into suspension and getting that into the clean out pump and uh, discharged into the creek. All right, everyone, so one of the things that we do at cleanouts is if we know the season before that a faceplate of the skimmer is bad, which we means that over time that silicone bead can uh, can break away just because it's silicone and you're working out in the elements. Um, but sometimes you have to go through and reseal those uh, skimmers, and that's what we're doing right here on this feature. We've known that this uh, skimmer has leaked for some time, and now the homeowner finally wants to go through and get that replaced. So what we did is we pulled back the two frame rocks on the side. I'm gonna, I'm going through and I'm just unscrewing all the screws all the way around the skimmer faceplate. Gonna pull that faceplate out and then I'm gonna trim back those roots, get it all nice and clean and, and dry, and then I'm gonna go back and put a nice thick bead of silicone all the way around and screw it back on. Fortunately, we're gonna be here all day, so it's nice that we can kind of let this set up for a couple hours, and then at the end of the day, around three or four, we can start discharging water back into the pond, allowing that silicone to, to dry. Thank you. 
So you can see right now that all these roots kind of went in between the face of the face plate and the skimmer and that is a no-no because there is uh, virtually no uh, silicone left and that's the waterproofing between the liner and the skimmer. So we're gonna go through, remove all these roots out of the way, clean this all up and then get it all cleaned up. We got the skimmer done. That pretty much leaves this pond done for the most part. We gotta wait a couple hours for it to fill up. Um, but we gotta wait, obviously, until we're at the end of the cleanout to fill this up so we can let that silicone dry. As you can see, Josh right now is power washing the other pond. So that way after lunch, we can start going through and we can uh, start uh, rinsing that pond down. And the thing is with this one, Josh and I actually continue on to keep working. So in that way, something is always happening while we're doing something. Right now, Connor and Forrest are taking their lunch so that way we kind of intermingled and we keep productivity up high. Uh, Tyler and Levi actually took off to do another clean out, but we know that they'll be back uh, in a little bit to come help us kind of wrap everything up because right down the block. So on the way back to the shop, they'll come by, give us a hand moving all the stuff into our trucks and then we'll be done for the clean out. So stay tuned. So right now, Josh is finishing up right now, uh, cleaning up the pond. We only have maybe like 10 minutes left over there. The next focus is gonna be cleaning out this stream. And then the most important part is getting the basin cleaned up. So we really pay attention when we're cleaning out these basins and you're working with these aqua blocks because this is the lifeline before it gets down to the pumps. Everything is gonna get caught from the pond down in this area. So we're gonna move all this gravel off these aqua blocks, get in and make sure that these aqua blocks are nice and clean. There's no obstruction getting down into the aqua blocks because that's what's gonna um, get down to our pumps and feed this. Uh, pond behind me. So what I'm gonna go do is pull these pumps out of the way uh, Get some of this debris out, out of here and then by the time that's done Josh is gonna be over here Starting to rinse down this area and then uh, we'll be coming down into here rinsing it out and then put the pumps back in and filling this bad boy back up Wow, what a day it has been. It's currently, I think it's like five or 5.30. I haven't even looked at the time to see what it is. So we got three features done. So that was the fountainscape. We got that done first thing this morning. We got the pond, which Josh and I worked on this morning as well. And we also got the pond going into the negative edge. All three of those features were really dirty, had a lot of debris inside of them and just a lot of mulch. So it took us a lot of time, especially with the pumps. We just had to keep somebody on those pumps, making sure we kept them clean so that we could continue to rinse on. And we also resealed that skimmer faceplate on the pond side. It's been a long day. Please stay tuned to see more cleanout content. I know it's just the beginning of cleanout season, so that means there's gonna be a lot more content coming down the pipeline. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next video.